All right, in this video, I'm gonna be showing you how I made this grid shortest path algorithm by using a few different techniques in JavaScript. So there's a number of things that are going on here. Uh, first of all, we draw a grid based on a certain size. In our case, it's width and length is 30 elements. So there's gonna be 30 by 30 in this grid. Second of all, you can see on hover, I am highlighting the cell that the cursor is hovering over. Once I click, that cell then turns to orange and it becomes the selected cell. As I move away from that cell, you can still see the one that I'm hovering over is green, but there's a path of purple that's drawn between the orange and green. And this is the shortest path that can be taken to get from orange to green. And as I move the cursor around, the path changes or automatically updates depending on where the cursor is at any time. When I click again, everything goes away and I'm back to where I started. I also have a zoom attached to the wheel event. And if you zoom in or scroll in or scroll out, it actually scales the grid up and down. So we can zoom the grid to a smaller size or zoom in to a much larger size. So just by changing a variable here, I can make the grid size much smaller and we can see it automatically update and everything else remains the same, just the size of the grid changes. So to start off, I draw a grid. It's pretty straightforward. I'm using HTML elements here. I create a div, give it the class of square and I give it a height and width and I attach the event listeners. So mouse enter, mouse leave, that's for the hovering. And then on click, I have a square click handler. Up here, when I generate the grid itself, I do attach the wheel event listener, and that's where I handle the scaling right here. So all we're doing is we're calling translate negative 50% to keep it centered. And then we apply the scale based on the zoom. On square enter, when we're hovering over something or the cursor enters a square, we highlight it, we attach the highlight class to the element and we call draw path. And then when we leave, we remove the highlight. Uh, draw path is where we actually run our algorithm to find the shortest path from wherever the clicked element is to wherever the hovered item is at the, at the given time. If there's no clicked element, we don't draw the path. So we only draw the path when we've actually clicked an element and we want to see the path from where the clicked element is to where the cursor is. And then essentially we start a while loop and from the orange cell, we look at all eight adjacent cells next to it and we see which one is the shortest distance in terms of its pixel height and width to where the cursor is. So just by doing some simple math, we can find the shortest distance and return that element and then move on to the next one until we get to the cursor element or we've maxed out on what we want to look for. Because I added a configurable max variable. So if we don't want to render the entire path, let's say we want to only go up to n elements, we can truncate it so we can only render, let's say, five. So let's apply that. And now let's look at how this, how this works. Once we move the cursor, it draws five elements of the path and then stops. It's still drawing no matter where we are, but it's only drawing up to five. And we can change that number to whatever we want. Now we are taking into consideration the diagonal. If we don't want to take into consideration the diagonal, we can comment out the cells that we're looking for, and we can only look at the top, bottom, left, and right, and then we'll see a sort of L-shaped instead of using the diagonal path. This is still the shortest path, but it's not allowing a diagonal movement. Now, this project that I'm working on is actually part of a bigger project that I'm not quite done with yet but I wanted to show you how this could be done and how we can sort of draw the shortest path. You may be familiar with Dijkstra's algorithm or A-star algorithm. 
This is sort of a combination of the two in a much simpler form. It doesn't take into account things like barriers or obstacles or paths that don't have an end, like a dead end path. So it's a much simpler version between those two algorithms that I mentioned, but it is still a shortest path algorithm specific to this use case. I won't have the code up for this on my GitHub yet because like I said, I'm not done with the project that I'm working on. But if you'd like to see more of this, go ahead and follow along. And if you have any questions, go ahead and leave them in the comment. And if you like this video, go ahead and hit the like button, subscribe for more, and we'll see you in the next one. Thank you for watching.